We've had several requests from customers for us to make a really quick rundown of the Kinefinity cameras, the control scheme, the menus, just to show you where things are and how to get between them on the camera. It's a relatively simple system, quite basically designed, but they do update it fairly regularly with the firmware. So this, this video is gonna be correct as of operating system 7.0 for the Edge 6K and Edge 8K. So there's several ways you can control the camera. There's obviously the main buttons on the front and the main menu, but then the simple camera systems can also be controlled via this quick access menu here on the side or the actual touch screen. So if you've got one of the new touch screen monitors, you can control most of those simple camera settings here on the actual touch screen itself, as well as once you're inside the menu system, you can go through your menu options and control them with touchscreen as well. So most of the everyday settings that you're gonna constantly be changing can be accessed very, very quickly. If we just concentrate on the touchscreen to start with, we can do your frames a second over here and you get a constant reminder of what your project frames a second is set to down there as well. You get your shutter speed, you'll get your ISO, your iris if you've got an electronic lens like I have here your ND, although you can't actually engage the ND, but once the ND is engaged, you can control it, your white balance, and what lookup table you're showing. Around the rest of the screen, you also get quite a lot of information, but this is stuff that you can't control with the touch screen. If you touch on these, it doesn't do anything. So you've got your, your crop size and your resolution over here on the left, your codec, the battery charge that is remaining, your clip name down here and whether you're recording or standby. In the middle of the screen, you've got an electronic level system. So if I tip this whole camera, you'll see that goes a little bit off. You've got your card data remaining, your time code, your audio levels right over here on the right hand side and whether this is designated as your A camera or B camera in the camera's metadata. And all of these same settings can be controlled down here on the side as well with this quick mix screen. You've got the same thing, frames per second, iris, shutter, ISO, ND, and white balance. And by clicking on any of the relevant buttons underneath those and turning the dial, you can really quickly change those. So aside from those buttons to control those quick access features, you also have quite a few other physical buttons on here. There's a button in the middle of the control wheel which hides your waveform. There's buttons one and two down here, which if button two jumps into magnification and button one easily selects up your lookup table. There's an audio button above that, which if you just press it once gets to your audio levels and your headphone volume. If you hold it down, you get to a quick access, deeper dive menu option. So what you're monitoring through your headphones, phantom power, that kind of thing. And up here above the card slots doors, there's an SSD button, which if you press it, you can see what's going on with your media and choose which card slot you're recording to. Some of that is also replicated up here on the monitor. You've got one and two. Number two is your magnification and number one is your histogram. The control wheel up here, which will control, basically do the exact same thing as your control wheel down on the side of the body. And if you push it in, you access your waveform. And then there's a record button and a menu button up here on the top of the monitor as well. Now, one of my favorite things on the camera is the preset access menu. So if you hold down button number one, you get access to eight saved presets. And this is your size of sensor, your resolution, your aspect ratio, your frame rate. So for accessing high frame rate options, this is really useful, the shutter speed to go along with that and the codec choice as well. So this is really useful for so many things. Going in and out of high frame rates is the obvious one, but also just resetting the camera back to your ordinary settings at the beginning of the day. So you can have the number one, I often have it set to as whatever my main record mode is, whether that's full 6K, full sensor, or maybe down 4K down sampled full sensor, you can have that set as a preset. The way you actually record those is in the main menu. You go to settings and you can save your current settings as one of those eight presets there. The other physical button on the side without delving into the menus is the play button. So if you hold this button down, you get into playback mode. 
And it takes a little bit a second there to get into it. But now you can tell I'm in playback mode because it says playback here on the bottom. And using buttons one and two, I can cycle through my clips like that. Now to actually start the clip, I press the play button again and it plays back. And to jump backwards and forwards through the clip, you use your control wheel. To exit playback, you just hold the play button again. So for anything more complicated than that, you're gonna to have to dive into the main camera menus, obviously. I'm not gonna run through everything that's in here in this video, it will take too long, but I'll just find the most important things for you. So the recording section of the menu is obviously gonna be the bit that you're gonna access the most. You get your codec choices here, all the different flavors of ProRes, RAW if you've got that enabled on the latest firmware. You've got your image format, this is the crop mode of the sensor. Full frame, obviously, is the wide full aspect ratio of the sensor. And then you can crop into Super 35, Micro Four Thirds or Super 16 to unlock different features. Record resolution is very clearly labeled. You get your actual pixels over here on the right, but then also a sort of name for it. So 6K HD, for example, for sort of UHD equivalent in 6K. Within project, you can set your project frames a second. This is really important. That's the actual delivery format that you want your final project to go out in. So most commonly that's 25 or 24 or 30, depending where you are in the world. That is separate to your recording frame rate. So if I've got that set to 25, for example, and I change my recording frame rate up here to something else, say 40, it's gonna turn it into a bit of slow motion. And you can tell it's gonna do that because it goes yellow when it's set to the same thing as your project frame a second, which you can always get quick access to down there. When it's set to the same thing, you see it's not yellow, it's white, the text there, which just shows, yep, yeah, I'm recording at my normal project frame rate rather than doing any slow or fast motion. So jumping back into the menus. Um, the rest of the project menu is to do with metadata. So you can do as much or as little of this as you want. Time code is what you would expect it to be. You can have free run, record run, external and jam options there and um, a bit more control. Um, in exposure and custom, you can choose your sensitivity mode to be EI or ISO. That's too complicated to dive into. In this video, um, for most people, I'd recommend sticking to ISO there. EI doesn't work the same as it does on, say, ARRI cameras or Sony cameras. And so that can take a little bit more, more learning to figure out how Kinefinity do it. Um, for most customers, I just recommend sticking to ISO. And then highlight is also quite complicated. This is 6.3 by default. Basically, Kinefinity let you do is they let you adjust how much of your dynamic range is distributed towards the highlights specifically. And that's this menu item. For most people, again, I just recommend leaving that at 6.3, but it's something you can play about with yourself and have a look at the differences if you want to custom tune it. You also get custom frames a second or shutter options. So I can choose very, very specific um, frame rates like down to 0.0. If I want 24.007, I, I can if I want to. So the last bit of the recording menu is your SSD options. This is where you can choose whether your drives are set to HFS or NTFS. Um, file formats, so whether you're on Mac or you're on Windows, and you can choose whether it shows you your remaining um, time or capacity left on your drive, and it's also where you format your drives. So let's move on very quickly to the rest of the options over here in the menu. In monitoring, strangely enough, white balancing is here in the monitoring rather than in the recording. I would have put it in the recording, but if you click white balance auto, that's where you do a custom white balance with a gray card. Then there's the guide option. So this is all sorts of crosshairs, anything like that for monitoring. And your monitoring settings, choose how things are displayed up here. You can choose your zebras. Blanking is to, to give you um, frame guides, if you like. Um, and what your waveform, your shutter, all the rest of it is displayed as. SDI output, you can choose whether overlays are on or off, whether there's an SDI, um, whether the lookup table being applied to your SDI and the actual frame rate of that SDI signal. And in the lookup table, that's where you can actually import your own custom lookup tables or change them and delete them. Within audio, everything is pretty much as you'd expect it to be here. Nothing too out of the ordinary. You can choose what you're monitoring over your headphones, 
um, where the phantom powers on the levels of it all. Most of this can be accessed through the audio button on the side of the camera as well. And in settings, you can save your preset list, which I've already shown you. You can turn that digital horizon on or off, choose how playback works. Um, and a really important one in here is the adapter and ND. If you're using the EF mount, you can turn that on or off here in this menu. So sometimes if you're using a manual lens, you'd want to turn that off just to avoid any potential problems by trying to send electronic communication to an adapter that can't receive it. And then within system, you get some of the more um, complicated things. You can update the firmware here, control your fan, which is which is very worthwhile. So if I write up all the way up to 100, the fan really kicks on if you're shooting in the desert or whatever. Network is to access their Wi-Fi app. That system settings option is where you can save the settings of the camera onto a drive and then load them back up again for just resetting this back to your defaults. So hopefully this has been helpful for any Kinfinity owners out there or anyone that's trying one of these out for the first time. Um, keep in mind, you need to check what firmware your camera is on. This video was made with firmware 7.0. So if you're using something older or more up to date than that, these things might well be different. But if you've got any questions, just leave a comment down below or get in touch with the ProV sales team. We'd be happy to help you out. And if you want to buy a Kinefinity for yourself, of course, just head over to ProV.co.uk. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.